I've been building this Audi TT over the past year, and honestly, we've come quite a long way. This car has almost every single bolt-on you can possibly do before you go big turbo. Today we're adding something that I've wanted to install for quite a while now, and it's something that we'll be able to reuse when we do end up upgrading the turbo on this car. In essence, we're killing two birds with one stone, future-proofing and making the car run better as it is. We're putting a front-mount intercooler on this 225. I specifically ordered a kit from CTS Turbo, which is a Canadian company that specializes in working on Audi and Volkswagen cars. I'm running their short shifter, and I've really liked their products in the past, so I'm super excited to see how their front mount intercooler kit works. According to their website, it's a very easy installation and doesn't require you to delete or move your horns or any of the sensors in the front bumper. It also doesn't require any bumper modification, which made me pretty excited. That's just what the installation guide says. We'll see if that's actually the case, though. This took a while to get here, and mainly because the company originally sent me their kit for the 180 horsepower model, which has a bunch of different pipes. I noticed this pretty quickly when I initially unboxed it, and the company was super helpful and quick to rectify this by sending me the correct piping. I love it when companies have good communication like that, and it was really cool that they were also willing to send me air fresheners and a lanyard. I had a great experience with their customer support team, and in my opinion, that says a lot about a company. After unboxing everything, I took a second of time to admire the work that they sent. I can't imagine the amount of time it takes to develop, test, and fabricate a kit like this for a very specific model. And on top of that, the materials they use are super premium, and I'm honestly really happy that I bought this. I mean, take a look for yourself at how cool these pipes look. I can't wait to get them on the car. Like I mentioned earlier, this intercooler is rated for 450 horsepower, and honestly, I don't think the TT is going to be going above that for quite a long time, if at all. I think anything more than that would be a bit too excessive for this platform, and keeping it at a level where I'd be able to autocross and drive it normally. I gotta move the S4 and play some car Jenga so we can put the intercooler on the TT. If you've never installed the front mount intercooler before, it may be something that you're a bit apprehensive to do. It sounds a lot harder than it really is, because at the end of the day, you're really just replacing a cooler in a line of piping. One of the benefits of ordering a kit that is specific to your car is it's going to remove a lot of the hassle of the custom fabrication you need to do to get it to fit properly. Custom or not custom, the first thing you need to do is remove the front bumper to get access to the front of the car. I suggest that you jack the front of the car up and put it on jack stand so you can remove both front wheels so you're not fighting with the wheel liner all day. I wanted to get a good video showing the front of the car up close so you can see after we install the front mount intercooler what the change in the cosmetic aspect is going to look like. I'm personally hoping you can see the intercooler through the lower mesh. I think that would really look cool on this kind of a car. Removing a bumper on the TT is pretty simple. Once the wheels are off, you're going to become best friends with a Torx bit as you start to remove the inner wheel liner. This is super straightforward when you have the wheel off, and you just need to remove it enough that you can see the inner cooler and get to the bolts near it. I went ahead and did this on both sides before moving on. Next, there are three bolts on each side that you're going to need to remove to actually disconnect the bumper. Two of which are behind the inner coolers and are a little bit difficult to see on video, but you'll be able to see them in your car. They're really easy to get to with an extension. On top of that, you're also going to have a Torx bit holding the bumper to the fender. This one's super easy to find and even easier to remove. The next bolts that you're going to want to remove are the ones on the top of the bumper that you can see on this little metal rail right here. They're all Torx bits, and like all the other bolts on this process, they are super easy to get to. And yes, I did remove one before filming it.
Once these bolts are off the top, on the bottom there's going to be two Phillips screws and that's it. A gentle tap on each side will dislodge the bumper. Then you can grab it from the top and slide it on out. Some of these cars came with headlight washers, so you're not going to be able to move the bumper very far until you disconnect this system. This is the only thing that you will definitely need to delete when installing a front mount intercooler, so keep that in mind. Guess breaking that's one way to do it. My coolant was pretty low, but if yours isn't, you may want to consider draining it before you do this. Since the system's being deleted for the intercooler, I put a bolt in this and stopped all the leaks. I also cut the hose short enough so that it'll hide perfectly under the fender. You can also get rid of the two air ducts in front of each of the intercoolers. It started to rain a little bit, so now I gotta wait for it to clear. We have to prep the bumper anyway, so now's a good time to do it. Ah yes, the greatest nemesis for working outside, the rain. At least we have stuff we can do indoors. If you've never seen a 225 bumper off the car, this is what it looks like. I've never taken the bumper off this car, so it's kind of cool to see it outside of the vehicle. Definitely a change of pace. Now I removed the washer fluid modules on the back of the bumper so we have room for the intercooler piping. You can see one of these on each side, and their purpose is really just to pop out of the bumper and spray the headlights, though I don't think this system ever worked on my car specifically. Each one of these has five Phillips screws, some of which are hard to get to, but once they're all out, you can just pop each one out. The hose on the bottom should come along with it. Now that the rain finally calmed down, we can continue. Let's look at the turbo system to see what we're actually replacing. Air comes in through the intake, goes down into the turbo where it's compressed, and then routed across the engine up top, down below the headlight, towards our first intercooler. This connects under the car to our second intercooler over on this side, which is then routed up and into the throttle body of the car. Like the name suggests, the goal of the intercoolers is to cool the compressed air from the turbo. Engines run a lot better when they have cold air entering the system, which is why we have intercoolers in the first place. The stock twin intercoolers on the 225 are pretty decent for what they are, but we want something a little better. There are three Torx bolts holding the headlight in place, and you need to move it out of the way so you can get access to the bolts holding the intercooler on at the bottom. You're also going to be able to remove the top hose clamp there. Our goal is to replace these twin intercoolers with a larger single intercooler. This intercooler has a larger core and will get a lot more airflow being in the front of the car. This is going to really help in preventing heat soak, especially as we want more power from the car. I'm also going to take this opportunity to replace some of the turbo hoses with more upgraded silicone. Another bolt that holds the intercooler onto the car is accessible from the bottom, and once you remove this hose clamp, you're good to wiggle the intercooler out. The process is nearly identical on the driver's side of the car, but the bolts are actually easier to get to. You may want to have a rag on hand if your car is a little bit old like mine because there's going to be some oily residue inside the intercoolers. This is pretty normal for a car with as many miles and as old as this one is. There's a metal hose on the bottom of the car that is likely going to be the place where most of the oil ends up. Just a warning. I'm going to keep the metal pipe that's under the car because there's a lot of lines that bolt to it and it seems like it's perfect for mounting them. The intercooler piping that comes with this kit goes directly where the old intercoolers went. I installed the metal intercooler hose to the new silicone pipe outside of the car so that I had easier access to the hose clamp. My goal right now is to loosely install the pipes on both sides so I can start to test fit everything before I bolt everything down permanently. The metal intercooler pipes have a really snug fit onto the OEM pieces of the car, so it was easier to remove this little rubber adapter between the MAP sensor and the intercooler piping and install it outside of the car. Then I put the pipe back in place. With the headlights loosely installed, here's what the intercooler piping is going to look like. Some kits require you to remove the brakes and some of the other wiring and sensors down there, but this one fits perfectly without having to do that. Next, I wanted to test fit the intercooler, and you can kind of just slide it up here. I should note I unbolted the sensor at the bottom of the radiator while putting the intercooler on. The two metal prongs on the top of the intercooler connect directly to the bolts on the top of the crash bar. These did not fit well right away, so I had to bend them a little bit to get them to fit snugly. They still don't fit perfect, but the intercooler is in there so tight it's not going anywhere. 
I then installed the 90 degree silicone pipes onto the intercooler so that we could see what the system is going to look like when it's all done. At this time, everything is only on there loosely so that I can still adjust things before tightening them down. When it was all buttoned, here is what the piping looked like. My favorite part about this kit is that all of the pipes come with bead rolled edges so that the silicone won't blow off them as easily. That and the kit included some really nice hose clamps and the overall fitment doesn't interfere with many of the sensors. You will however have to tilt down by 90 degrees the sensor that was in front of the radiator. But as far as sensors go you don't have to remove or relocate anything else, including the horns that are down here. These hoses fit in here snug and I'm not worried about them going anywhere, however the bolts and brackets that they included don't actually line up with the car perfectly. Even though the fitment wasn't perfect, I think this kit is a fantastic bargain for your money as far as front mount intercooler kits go for the 225. The only real problem is that the brackets on the actual intercooler don't actually match up with what's on the crash beam of the car. Once the intercooler's in here and on one of them though, it's in there so tight that it is not going to go anywhere. I'll use a hose clamp or something to tighten the other side just in case though. This isn't really necessary, but I felt the need to cap the lower intercooler piping so that nothing could get in there. This is from the old setup and it's not even being used, but it shouldn't matter that much. I then went and tightened every single bolt in the system to make sure that we didn't create any vacuum leaks by installing this. I also used some extra hose clamps I had to tighten down the system to make sure that it really wasn't going to go anywhere. That's optional, however. Like I mentioned earlier, I also went ahead and used a hose clamp to secure the other side of the intercooler, even though, in all reality, it was in there tight enough, it was never going to go anywhere. While I still have the bumper off, I want to start it up and see if it idles and runs okay. I specifically went through and checked the fittings on all of the hoses and pipes that we touched and messed with to put the front mount intercooler in place. The dead giveaway that we did this correctly was that my idle vacuum pressure on startup was identical to before we put it on. Looks like the car's running just as I expected, so we're good to actually start reinstalling everything. This will be fun. Before we go ahead and throw the bumper on, I decided to put the original intercoolers next to the newly installed front mount intercooler. From a size standpoint, the front mount intercooler is about the size of three of the standard intercoolers. So it definitely makes sense that it cools better and is rated to handle a lot more horsepower. Now it's time to put the bumper back on and make sure that everything fits properly. Another awesome thing about this kit is I didn't have to modify or cut up the bumper whatsoever to get it to fit with the intercooler piping they supply. It all just works, and that's something that you learn to appreciate with aftermarket parts. Reattaching the bumper is just as easy as taking it off, but I highly suggest you start with the sides first and then do the top and bottom. You're also going to want to leave the top two bolts of the headlights loose so that you can readjust them later and make sure that all the panel gaps are equal. Doing the sides first pulls the bumper into its proper place and allows a lot of freedom of adjustment for the top and bottom screws. There's a lot of adjustment you can do when it comes to putting your bumper back on to make it look better or worse or whatever you really want it to look like. My personal goal is to just make sure that the panel gaps look as equal as possible. While I had the car up in the air, I decided to use a little bit of trim restorer on the front grill to make it look a lot nicer. This stuff works great and it lasts about a year before you have to do it again. It is literally just as simple as rubbing it on the trim. Here's what the intercooler looks like with the grill fully installed. You can just barely make out the intercooler piping, but you can see the intercooler behind the front grill, which is exactly what I was going for. It's a subtle enhancement, but if you know, you know. After this, I reinstalled the wheel liner on both sides. Once the wheel liner was installed on both sides, I moved on to installing the wheels back on the car. Once the wheels were mostly tightened, I lowered the car and torqued the wheels down. This is the final product, and from a cosmetic standpoint, I love the look of the intercooler behind the lower grille. A front mount intercooler makes an extremely subtle cosmetic improvement to this car. It's something that most people wouldn't even notice, but if you do and you care about cars, it's a really cool addition. On top of that, a fresh coat of trim restorer is always nice. This car is finally starting to look like what I want it to for summer.
It's been a long day, but the intercooler is on, so now all we have to do is test drive the car and see how it performs. I'm not really expecting too much of a performance jump, but if there is, I'll definitely let you know. What I'm basically expecting is that when I'm romping on the car repeatedly, that performance dip from heat soak is gonna be minimized. So I really won't notice this until I really hoon the car. Sounds good, runs smooth. I'll have to do a few more of those to see what I really think. Idle's good, awesome idle vacuum pressure. Yeah, car runs and drives awesome. No real complaints, man. While an intercooler may not provide an immediate jump in horsepower, I definitely think it's a worthwhile upgrade on any turbocharged car for the longevity of your vehicle. And it's gonna help a lot to ward off heat soak if you live in an area that gets really warm. In other words, I am super excited that I finally have one on the car. We're making a ton of progress on this car and I've just got more in store. I'm definitely leaning towards my next big project on this car being a complete refresh of the suspension. I've also got a handful of other projects I wanna work on on this car while we wait for the suspension parts to come in. I wanna thank you so much for watching. The amount of support you guys give me is absolutely unreal and it just keeps me motivated to do more. If you enjoy the video or learn something, consider dropping a like and subscribing for more. I'm going to have project cars my entire life, and I plan on documenting everything I do here. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.